Okay, uh, centralization. So, when we talk about centralization is uh, regarding the decision making. So, centralization uh, refer to the degree to which decision making is sent, uh, concentrate at a single point in the organization. So, centralization is actually referring to a decision making. Uh, it's been done at the center or it's been done at the headquarters. Decentralization is the decision making that has been done at the branch or uh, away from the center or away from the decision or uh, run from the uh, headquarters. So the top management uh, empower their employees or their, their managers to make their own decision whether the managers or employees are situated or located in the, in the geographical, different geographical areas such as they have their own branch outside um, in, in, the, in the other countries or uh, in the other regional uh, locations. So the advantage of decentralized uh, can act more quickly to solve the problem because uh, if let's say uh, the problem arise, uh, decentralized style of organizations, they can just uh, address the, the problem straight away, do not have to wait until the uh, until the top management or the, the the order come from the center so they can make their own decisions for decentralized organizations and people also can provide uh, input into decisions because um, they involve uh, people uh, in the at the branch or employees at the branch and also employee at the lower level so they can also provide uh, their input or their views uh, regarding the decision making and employees also are less likely to feel alienated because they are also uh, involved in the decision making for decentralized decision making uh, style of organization so they feel uh, they also be invited to participate so they do not feel uh, alienated they do not feel uh, like uh, they are not belong to the organizations and formalizations when we talk about formalization we talk about whether the job is standardized or not standardized so the degree to which a job within the organization are standardized so a highly formalized uh, formalized job means that a minimum amount of Descriptions. That means a high formalized job. That means the job is highly standardized. So the employees do not have any freedoms or any discretions to determine or to change uh, regarding how to, to perform the jobs. Low formalizations. That means employees are being given more uh, freedoms or more empowerment to decide on performing the jobs. So low formalizations normally referring to job behavior that are relatively non program so organization normally provide their employees freedom or empowerment to decide on their own uh, when the, the jobs or the or decision making involve non routine that means uh, it's not everyday it's not day to day jobs uh, it's something new something um that arise that just newly arise so this need to be uh, uh, to be creative, need to be innovative in solving the problem. So, uh, normally, uh, the non-routine or non-program kind of jobs needs to use low formalizations. And like I mentioned, low formalizations, employee will be given freedom to exercise their discretions or their empowerment instead of high uh, formalized job involving more routine jobs. So these uh, more routine jobs normally uh, they don't have uh, freedoms to to uh, to to do uh, whatever they like or to exercise their discretions. But here they've been given more uh, discretions to decide in performing the jobs. So organizational structure consists of, uh, the textbook consists of three types, simple structure, bureaucracy and metrics. Normally simple structure are uh, being characterized by low departmentalizations that means they do not have many departments. They may have one or two but they do not have many so that's a simple structure. Normally simple structure uh, is started when uh, the, the individual or anyone want to just form their organization. So the early started uh, startup organizations uh, normally start with a simple structure. Uh, 
when they grow a larger, the organization grow larger, they become more bureaucratic. So in the beginning, when they just start up the organization, uh, the the structure is just a simple. So they have wide span of control where the owner or the CEO, the owner is also the the CEO or the founder, uh, only one or two, and they have many employees. That means uh, not like a normal bureaucracy when they have many departments. So simple structure, they only have low uh, departments. They also have a wide span of control with a few manager, many employees under each of the managers. The authority are more centralized because the owner uh, normally when at the beginning the organization do not have many employees. Uh, so the owner uh, has more authority. The owner normally the, the founder or the CEO normally have more authority and this authority is centralized in a single person that means the owner. So they also have little formalizations. They do not have um, a very um, strict uh, or standardized they just are more flexible and the organization are also flat. Flat mean they do not have many layers, they do not have many managers. So they only perhaps have two or three vertical levels where uh, one individual has decision making authority. So I give example um, later regarding the simple structure. But basically when we talk about the uh, flat organization we are of simple structure, normally flat organization is just like this two layers. That means this is a manager, this is the owner, this is the founder, and these are the employees. So simple structure because they just a startup organizations, so they normally simple in structure. So simple structure also the managers and the owner are the same like I mentioned the founder, the owner, the manager they are the same. So the strength is they are simple, they are fast and flexible because it's only one authority and also inexpensive to maintain and accountability is clear because the authority is centered at the owner or the, the, the this one manager. Weaknesses however is difficult to maintain in anything other than small organizations. So when the organization become larger they cannot they cannot have the simple structure. They need to be more toward becoming more bureaucratic. And weaknesses of simple structure also is quite risky because everything depends on this one person, that means the order or the manager. If this one person is sick or uh, having a problem, so the rest also cannot do their job effectively because everything depends on this one or the, this person. So this what I meant by simple structure. Simple structure is when the, the employees or the or when the individual just want to start their business or their organization. So when the startup organization or when the, the, the newly start uh, type organization, they normally start with the simple structure. When they become uh, larger, when the business become uh, growing uh, or develops, so the organizations uh, will move into becoming more bureaucratic where they have more departmentalizations, they have more special specialization, the decision making are more uh, at the center and they have many rules and regulations to follow. So that's uh, differences between the simple and bureaucracy. So as you mentioned, I mentioned uh, in the overview of the bureaucracy, a bureaucracy is a characterized by standardizations. They need to have a standardized because now they have more employees. If they didn't have standardized, uh, everything will be chaos because very difficult to handle many employees without standardizations. So uh, the, the organization also under bureaucracy, they highly uh, doing a uh, routine operating task. They very formalized. Uh, they have very formalized rules and regulations. Formalized mean uh, the rules and regulations are become more formal. Formal. Uh, they uh, they have to follow the rules and regulations. No more flexible like a, a, a simple structure. The tasks also are grouped based on the functions. They are based on the department. When we talk about departmentalization, so tasks are grouped into functional departments. The authority and decision making. Uh, 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 at the center, that means at, at the top management or at the top uh, at the CEO. They also have narrow span of control. Narrow span of control means they have more managers and they have few employees under each managers. So the organization become a taller style of organizations because now they have more managers, but uh, under each managers they have fewer employees compared to simple structures.
So the decision making follow chain of command. That means uh, uh, employees have responsible to the their direct managers and their direct managers are responsible to the other uh, above managers over them, and then to the middle managers, to the top management, to the CEO, and so on. That's how the chains of command continuously link from uh, from lower to the top uh, management. Or strengths of bureaucracy, ability to perform uh, activities in a standardized way. Uh, so the, the activities become more efficient because now they have standards to follow. Without the standards, the activities uh, in the organization become uh, disorganized because now they have many many employees and many uh, job activities to do without uh, standardized uh, standardizations, it will be a chaos. The weaknesses of bureaucracy, uh, they have so many subunits, that means they have so many departments, and the department they have many subunits. So because of so many subunits, can create a conflict also. And unit goal become dominant instead of organizational goals. This is one of the problems with the bureaucracy. And they also are having obsessive behavior towards following the rules. If you go to the organizations uh, or big organizations, sometimes you will have to go to the uh, you have to go for example to this level of, em of employees and then be sent to this level of employees and be sent to this department be sent to the departments because they are so obsessive following the rules so that's why when the customer come or when uh, other public people come they uh, in order to get something from them they have to follow the rules uh, and then uh, that's the problem with the bureaucracy and also because of they are so uh, because they they have many um, departments many employees so uh, sometimes the management try to cover their weak managements do not want to show that they are actually having a problem so this one of the problem regarding bureaucracy Main characteristic of bureaucracy, as you can see, standardization. This is very important for the big company for with the many uh, employees. Uh, they uh, they also uh, standardize in the policy rules and uniform procedure and so on. And they also adopt highly systematic and routine work procedure. So you can expect that bureaucracy organization style of bureaucracy. They are very systematic in the of procedure. So they have rule and regulations. They are standardized. They are formalized and they follow the procedure it is important to follow the procedure because they have many employees without having a without, without following the procedure uh, everything will be in chaos will be disorganized the advantage of bureaucracy uh, efficient execution of standardized activities because they follow this so they make sure that the activities are standardized so everything become in order so that's look nice that looks uh, manage uh, met, met, it looks like a, a good management. Economy of scale also because of, uh, of a, a big company, uh, because of bureaucracy, uh, they could, uh, they could uh, maybe buy uh, products or produce products in the uh, larger amounts. So minimum, however, uh, and, uh, even though this is considered um, uh, good, uh, they also can have uh, some problem in them of uh, like I mentioned uh, bureaucracy uh, red tapes and so on however advantages uh, another advantages of bureaucracy is minimum uh, duplications in terms of personnel and equipment so uh, personnel for example if we want to go to if you want to uh, see people from human resource management you just go straight to human resource management you don't have to go to uh, other departments to see the human resource management so it's very clear uh, when we have uh, when the organizations have uh, formed their uh, style of bureaucracy Two types of bureaucracy, functional structure and divisional structure. Functional structure focusing more on uh, roles and tasks, uh, similar specialists, uh, role and tasks. Divisional structures focusing more on grouping employees into units uh, by products, service, customer and geography, uh, geographical area. So that's the difference between two aspects of bureaucracy in terms of functional, focusing more on the tasks, divisional, focusing more on the units.